Buddhism is world religion founded by the Buddha in ancient India. Buddhists seek wisdom, meaning, inner peace, and freedom from greed, hatred, and ignorance. Mutually sustaining life, a Buddhist call to a troubled world. This life is impermanent. In an ever-changing world, we are living a new life every day. Hello, how are you? I hope we find you in the best of spirit and health. Today, I would like to begin by looking at the third mark of existence. All conditioned phenomena is impermanent. Or rephrase, life is impermanent. This means that everything in our life is subject to change. What can we do as ordinary persons living in today's modern society to apply the lessons drawn from the truth of impermanence in our lives? Well, from my point of view, there are three things. First, to fully understand the truth of impermanence. Second, to focus on the now and live fully in the present. And third, to be open to changes that unfold in our lives. I want to stress the fact that these lessons are oriented more toward laypersons living in contemporary society, whereas monks and nuns, on the other hand, have different priorities and therefore place more emphasis on not being attached to things. The ultimate goal is the same, however, and the difference is merely a matter of degree. Today, I will be con concentrating on the first of three lessons, which is a call for us to truly understand the truth of impermanence with our total being. Most of us know with our head that things change, but it's extremely difficult to accept change when it hits home, especially in the form of the loss of a loved one. To illustrate this point, there is a well-known parable of Kisa Gotami and the mustard seed. Once there lived a woman named Kisa Gotami, who married a wealthy man and soon had a child. Her life was going very well. However, just as her son was about to walk, the child suddenly died of unknown causes. In great shock and disbelief, frantically holding the dead child in her arms, Kisa Gotami sought help from anyone she met in the town, pleading, please save my child. A follower of the Buddha was moved by Kisa Gotami's plight and told her, your child's ailment is too serious for any doctor to cure. There is only one person who can save him, and that is the Buddha, who happens to be visiting our town and residing at Jetavana Park, at the outskirts of town. Kisa Gotomi immediately went to the park and requested the Buddha to save her son. After listening intently, the Buddha told her, to cure this child, we need several grains of mustard seed. So, please go gather them in town. Buoyed by this, Kisa Gotomi started off without delay, at which time the Buddha added, those mustard seeds must come from a household that has never experienced death. However, Kisa Gotami was too excited to fully comprehend the meaning of the Buddha's words. She went to the first house and sought the mustard seed, but the house had just recently experienced a death of an elder member of the family. The second house, too, had lost a member of their family a few years earlier, and a third household had also lost a small child. Despite these setbacks, Kisa Gotami continued to knock on the door of the neighboring houses, spurred on by the hope of saving her child. She visited many more houses, 
only to be told that each house had experienced death. At the end of the day, as the sun began to set, Kisagotmi felt utterly despondent and hopeless. Then, in the midst of her despair, her mind suddenly opened up in the realization of what the Buddha was trying to teach her, that death was universal and no household was exempt from the pain of losing their loved ones. Kisagotami then understood that she was not alone. She thus abandoned her efforts to gather the mustard seeds and instead went to give her child a proper funeral and then returned to Jetavana Park to see the Buddha. The Buddha asked her, were you able to get those mustard seeds? Kisagotami confided in the Buddha of her realization and her acceptance of the loss of her child. She then sought to become a disciple of the Buddha by joining the order of nuns. The most important point of the story is that although many of us know about the truth of impermanence with our mind, we must make a greater effort to understand fully with our total being, just as Kisa Gotami came to do by the end of the story. In order to appreciate the truth of impermanence, let's look at how changes are taking place all around us. Some changes are obvious, while others are not. On the cosmic plane, nothing remains constant, for astrophysicists tell us that the universe continues to expand at astronomical speeds. We don't really feel or notice this motion because everything else around us, including the sun, the solar system, and our galaxy are all moving together. On our Earth as well, the changes are unceasing. The very ground that we stand on is moving, though very slowly, so that geologists tell us that North America will eventually merge with the Asia continent. Our body is also constantly changing. Physiologists tell us that the cells in our body completely renew themselves within a period of three months. In other words, the cells that make up our body now are completely different from the ones that we had three months ago. The cells are dying and renewing themselves constantly. Leaving the physical realm to the social realm, we notice that changes are ongoing. Language is one of the best barometers of social change. The same word carries different meaning, reflecting change. For example, 50 years ago, when we said chip, it meant a piece of wood, not a component of a computer hardware. Hardware back then was identified with a store that sold nails, garbage cans, and shovels. And software was not even a word. In those days, Coke was a cold drink, pot was something you cooked in, and grass was a lawn that we mowed. Changes are also apparent in moral values. For instance, living together before marriage used to be hotly debated, but today it has largely become a non-issue for many people. Our human relationships are also subject to change. This becomes apparent if you look at your personal address book 15 years ago or even five years ago. You will notice many people who are no longer in your life. Among them are those with whom you had a falling out, those who moved far away, and those who have passed on. And the older we get, the more the last group grows in size. I think it's safe to say that the changes in our relationships with, our, with others are the source of our greatest joys as well as the most painful heartaches, as we saw in Kisagotami's plight of losing her son. Impermanence is everywhere, 
from the cosmic, cosmic realm to our social values, as well as our personal relationships. This is what the third mark of existence is all about. All conditioned phenomena is impermanent, or life is impermanent. What's more, don't you agree that these changes seem to start to speed up with age? I recall when I was 12 years old, I wanted so badly to be 13 so I could be a teenager. However, one year seemed so long and I could hardly wait for the time to pass. Now, one year goes by much too quickly and much too fast to keep up mentally. For instance, when our birthday approaches, we utter to ourselves, already? Thus the truth of impermanence doesn't only mean that things are constantly changing, but rather that they change a little too fast. How then are we to deal or react to the fact that things in our lives are in constant flux as we have discussed? Well, today I have been stressing the importance of understanding this truth with our total being. To do so, we must keep reminding ourselves in our readings and practice for this teaching to be internalized. The more we internalize, a mental space is formed within ourselves wherein we can find the strength and the tranquility for dealing effectively with the changes that we experience in our lives. The Dalai Lama explains this process using a metaphor of the ocean. He speaks of the topsy-turvy world on the surface of the ocean, but when a person has cultivated understanding, he or she can always go beneath the surface of the mind to experience the area of calm and peace. One way to nurture such a space within each of us is for us to truly understand the truth of impermanence with our total being as expressed in today's passage. This life is impermanent. In an ever-changing world, we are living a new life every day. Thanks for being with us. In our next show, a Tibetan Buddhist monk will join us to share his thoughts on the truth of impermanence. See you then. We at Bukyo Dendo Kyokai pursue peace and happiness for people around the world. We have published the Buddhist teachings into 41 languages and donated our publication to hotels and other facilities in 55 countries. We would like to share the Buddhist teachings with people around the world. That's our mission. Visit our website for more information.